Hi everyone, it's winter time in Canada and today we're checking out ChatGPT in the immigration world. We will be conducting a live consultation with ChatGPT to understand how accurate this artificial intelligence tool is for Canadian immigration purposes. The legendary Stephen Hawkins said that artificial intelligence would be the end of mankind. Today, we're not too concerned with the end of mankind, but we want to understand if immigration lawyers in Canada and licensed consultants like myself will be unemployed by the time ChatGPT is fully rolled out with the most current information that is available online. Will I still have a job after this live GPT consultation or not? Only time will tell. Hello, my name is Reza and I work with the Ingway immigration team helping applicants move to Canada. Whether it's for yourself, your kids, your business or all of the above, we do make it happen. Let me make this clear. I'm not an actual full-time YouTuber, but I work hands-on with our licensed team working on actual applications and communicating with the Canadian Immigration Department and overseas embassies on a daily basis representing our clients. These videos are made for the purpose of sharing our hands-on immigration knowledge with our worldwide audience. And if you're thinking about immigrating to Canada, well, we're here to help. Get a free email assessment for eligible applicants by filling out the form below this video. Here's a quick intro into what ChatGPT is. My background is not in the IT world or AI field, nor am I subject matter expert on AI or ChatGPT. But here's what we know. ChatGPT went viral on social media for its ability to write code, essays, and compose various content based on requests users made on its platform. Its main strengths so far in areas like writing and composition, describing and summarizing large blocks of long form data, including code, converting natural language to another language, and even creating realistic images and not based on specific descriptions provided by the user using text. This version of ChatGPT is only updated with online knowledge up to September 2021. Therefore, it is not currently fully updated on today's latest policies and immigration news for the purposes of our test today. Now let's see how it does with Canadian immigration. We're going to ask a series of independent questions and check if the information provided by ChatGPT is valid and correct. Quick warning, a lot of the answers provided below are not from a licensed immigration practitioner and may be incorrect or misleading. This is for demonstration purposes only. Let's start with the first question asking ChatGPT about provincial entrepreneur programs. Indian national who's applying from overseas, $300,000 net worth with management experience, no language score, 40 years old. Which programs would he be eligible for? ChatGPT is mentioning Ontario main entrepreneur program inside GTA, which he will not be unfortunately eligible for because of net worth. BC base program, which again, this applicant would not be eligible for and the Manitoba Provincial Entrepreneur Program. Unfortunately, this applicant will not be eligible with this net worth. The correct answer should have been the BC Regional Pilot, subject to the fact that the applicant could get a CLB4. And it was a good shot by ChatGPT. I like it. Now, obviously very quick in responding. How can I convert my closed work permit under the C12 LMI exempt work permit to a PR? ChatGPT is mentioning the Canadian Experience class under the express entry system but again you cannot own the company fully like if you're over 50 percent shareholder you would not be eligible under any work permit to apply so i guess they should have clarified this which they didn't but again it's an ai chatbot what can we expect but it was good i mean express entry is obviously one provincial nominee program and the other what is the approval rate under the canadian federal startup visa program uh, it's mentioning that it was a relatively new program and there's not a lot of published stats out yet. Yeah, I mean, IRCC doesn't make them very easily publicly accessible, but there are statistics available today, which we share in the immigration networks, obviously. But yeah, that's fine. I mean, it was a little bit of a tricky question, I would say. How can I convert my valid visitor visa in Canada into study permit? Let's see what ChatGPT does. It's mentioning that you need to apply, get a letter of admission, a 
apply for a study permit. Unfortunately, this is incorrect. I have to sort of intervene here. Um, you do need to meet certain prerequisite eligibility criteria if you're planning for a post-secondary academic study permit, converting from inside Canada as a visitor. So this answer is actually quite wrong. So I'm surprised that it got this one wrong because this is nothing new. It's quite confusing. What options do I have if my overseas study permit to Canada has been refused by IRCC? It says you can appeal it. Yeah, okay. I mean, technically it's an application for leave. And I mean, it's a little bit off the answer. I would say reconsideration, reapplication, application for judicial review. And yeah, number three, <laughs> as it said, just give up on Canada. I mean, yeah, it's not wrong, but... <laughs> It's not so, an answer somebody maybe were looking for at this time. I'm an overseas entrepreneur. I want to apply for an LMI exam work permit to set up a new business in South Canada. What type of investment or benefit should be included in my application? Um, so it's mentioning what it should be included in terms of significant economic and social benefit. And you have to include a nice business plan, investment, job creation, innovation, industry expertise. So I like this answer, actually. So kudos to ChatGPT. I think it gave a better answer than I would in terms of being very comprehensive. Because sometimes we as practitioners take our knowledge for granted or the applicant's knowledge and assume certain things. Thankfully, an AI robot cannot assume anything. It just spits out the information it could find. Here's a new question, which is a statistics question. What is the highest refusal rate country for temporary resident visas for the IRCC? And again, this is as of September 2021 knowledge base, the database of knowledge that ChatGPT has. So it's interesting because is Yemen for 78.5%. It's definitely right. I think definitely Cuba uh, is also on there. Here's another interesting question. I'm an overseas entrepreneur who owns a chain of restaurants. Which Canadian business immigration program is more suitable for me? I'm 50 years old, language score of CLB4, minimum three years work experience, and net worth of $1 million. Well, it explains to us that the provincial nominee programs are there. Yeah, definitely true. Federal entrepreneur program. Um, well, this... Uh, this is not, it doesn't even exist anymore. So I don't know why it's, <laughs> why it's including that as of 2021, that program didn't work. It didn't exist. There's a self-employed program, but not a federal entrepreneur program with a net worth of 1.6. That was back in the days with the previous government. And it was closed in 2013 or 14, I believe. And then the startup visa program. I would not recommend that to an owner of a chain restaurant because uh, restaurants and hospitality, unless they have an innovation related to some industry. So this one is like 50% right, 50% wrong. But again, I don't want to be too critical of it because it literally, it's like, you know, a young immigration lawyer slash consultant. That's how I consider ChatGPT to be. They're learning. What are the most important documents required for Canadian work experience under CC? Yeah, reference letter, job title. So this is good. T4 and pay stops, employment reference letters, contracts. Oof. This stuff is hot and this is what's really required to prove your Canadian work experience. Right? So I like this answer. It's spot on. I would pay for that advice. <laughs> Here's what ChatGPT is really strong at, right? It's strengths. Write a study plan for me to submit to IRCC. I'm a 34 year old married with children from Nigeria, graduated eight years ago, worked for the bank, have a bachelor's degree, and I have applied and received a letter of admission for one year postgraduate certificate. And it's actually writing the study plan, which is pretty good. I mean, I would obviously work on it more, but it can give you a framework of how you can build up towards a better study plan. So it, if you're stuck of how to start one, chat gpt is there and i would say it does a better job than most lawyers or consultants could right give me some creative ideas on introduction in a submission letter to rcc for study permit so here it says well start with a powerful quote or anecdote use a attention grabbing question share a personal story Use a unique and creative format. Highlight your skills and achievements. Mention your academic achievements if you've got really good grades. So this is the stuff that you need to use uh, ChatGPT for, to help you write, to help you create 
content or explanation. Maybe English is not your first language. So ChatGPT can definitely support these types of efforts. You know, don't plagiarize, but it will definitely give you ideas and it can fine tune what you're writing. So in general, I like it. I like ChatGPT, not as an immigration consultant, but as a AI chatbot that can help you write and do basic research. And when it's updated to, to current date, I would say statistics would also be a strength of ChatGPT. You can use it for a variety of purposes, obviously. It's an ever evolving artificial intelligence. If I compare it to a licensed immigration practitioner in Canada who just started with zero experience, I would say ChatGPT probably did better. So it turns out that I still have a job, folks, as a licensed immigration consultant in Canada. But time will tell how powerful this AI tool will become in the future. Remember, join us for our webinar on March 23rd, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. local time in Toronto. We're talking about startup visa, how to get admission to a designated organization, and we have make sure you register using the link below this video. If you're thinking about immigrating, whether permanently or temporarily, to Canada, you're at the right place. I can guarantee you only one point. You'll know what to expect, the entire process clearly laid out for you, and all the risks identified, including costs. There will be no surprises in terms of the expenses or costs, just results. Our team speaks over eight languages, and we help applicants from over 48 different countries during their immigration process. And this list is growing every day. Click the link below this video and get a free email assessment for eligible applicants. If you're ready to apply and want to do a one one-on-one -on -one session with me or any of my licensed immigration team members at Ingwe, you can also book a session directly using the consultation link in the description of this video. And if you have questions about Canadian immigration, remember we're here weekly live on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook every Thursday, 11 a.m. North America Eastern Standard Time, where we answer all of your immigration questions for free on the spot. So see you next Thursday.